What's up, gearheads? It's Toby with GearReport.com. We're out here at Mining Ridge Armory today, and we're going to be working on a review of the Romeo One 1x30 Miniature Reflex Optic on our Sig Sauer P320 X5 that we did a previous review on. So stick around, see what we've got to say about it. All right, gearheads, so what we've done is we've mounted the Romeo One optic on the, the slide of our Sig P320 X5. And as you can see, it mounts almost perfectly flush with the slide all the way around. Now, if you're wanting to mount another optic of another brand, you're gonna have to purchase an, a, a, an adapter plate similar to what we've done with this Vortex Venom to be able to get it to mount. As you can see here, with a different optic that we were trying to mount and test, we had to get a mount plate, which actually increases the overall, overall profile and height of the slide because you're gonna have that additional plate that mounts up underneath and then raises it up. But the Romeo One is pretty much just a, a, it marries right up to the slide by design. And as you can see, the Romeo One optic has a little back groove here, similar to the rear sight aperture on a uh, standard pistol. So I'm curious to see how that's going to end up, if we can end up with a co-witness style going on with certain front sights. Um, certain front sights are pretty much, that they say, will co-witness. I'm not sure that this one will because it sits a little low. I'm actually not expecting it's going to do so, um, but we'll find out. So what we're going to do first with the Romeo One optic is we're going to actually sight it in because we've not done that. So I will, t I will get a couple of shots here in a minute of our range down here, what we've got going on. We're in the process of redoing the range, so forgive the mess. But we've got some paper targets with half inch increments setting at about 15 yards. We've got a steel square AR500 at about 25 yards. We've got one at 50. Then we've got some IDPA steel man size targets out at about 80 yards, maybe 85, somewhere in that distance. So we're going to sit here and we're going to sight this thing in, see how accurate we can get it at the 15 yard mark, and then we're going to play with it out a little further and see what we can do. We'll be using some Blazer Brass 124 grain full metal jacket just for the initial sight in on it. We're not wanting to spend a lot of money to get it close, you know, just to dial it in and get it on paper and get it close. Then we'll be using some of the Agia ammunition that they've sent us. Um, some of the jacketed hollow points in 117 grain, some 147 grain full metal flat point, some uh, 124 grain full metal jacket, and some 115 grain full metal jacket to, to dial it in and get a little more precise, and then to reach out and play a little bit at some of the further distances. So again, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get set up. We're gonna sight this thing in and get it as close at 15 yards as we can, and then we're gonna kinda go from there and see what we can get going on. Now. Some of you might be asking why I chose 15 yards for my optic compared to 25 or 30. So I've done a lot of research to see what the optimum range to set one of these sights up at. And there's a lot of different opinions on it. And I tossed up between 15, 20, 25, and 30 um, and really struggled with that. But what I've done is I decided on 15 because of the distances that I shoot whenever I'm doing classes, courses of fire, or competitive shooting. 15 yards seem to, to match what I'm gonna do, you know, because that's, what, 45 feet and in. It seemed to match most of what I do, uh, you know, when I'm actually out doing shooting. All right, so without further ado, we're gonna jump right into it. So the Romeo One box, as you can see, comes with a lot of good information about the optic itself. And on the inside, obviously it came with the optic, comes with an instruction manual, an electrical wipe, and a Allen key or hex wrench. Comes with an additional piece of foam to cover and protect the optics. It comes with multiple different styles of mounts. You've got a Picatinny mount. Um, it <laughs> comes with this style mount for it. Okay. My goodness. As I mentioned, the side end tool, we're gonna to leave that out because I actually need it, which is why I opened the box. Uh, another Allen wrench, 
couple of different sets, style set screws, including you'll notice that these actually, these two set screws right here are actually have a piece of foam to keep them in place. I'm not gonna pull those out. And then it comes with, of course, longer ones, longer set screws. Now I have, I have read some reviews and watched some videos and read some articles about some of the people who, who had issues with the different lengths of screws that came with it out of the box uh, and putting it on their slide. Um, full disclosure, I actually opted to go with a different, different mount screw as well. So I, I have a bunch of screws laying around from previous builds of, of other different parts and different guns and that kind of thing. And um, the two screws that went in through the top on the slide down through the bottom, doubt you'll be able to see it, but they come through the little, two little holes down there in the bottom of the slide up in here and in here. Um, they were a little too long for my taste. They actually fell, fell a little far down in there. And I was just, I, I'm sure that it, I'm over worrying. Um, I guarantee I'm worrying too much. But I think they went too far down in there, so I used two different screws that were a little, little closer in length to where it just kind of bit down into the slide and stayed and didn't go any deeper uh, when I was mounting it. So again, that, that your mileage may vary. I mean, it's just, it's just really that simple. But when I was mounting it on mine, I opted to get a little shorter screws uh, to dial it in. As you can see, the battery compartment is on the top of it there is quick and easy to get to. You don't have to remove the optic in order to, uh, to, to change out the battery. I can't imagine though that if I had to remove this optic once I've got it zeroed in, that once I put it back on, because of the way it's designed to go into those two specific bolts, I can't imagine that it would lose zero. Um, we might try that and see, uh, we'll find out. But as you can see, you've got your, your set screw comes here. You've got your windage adjustment here on the side of the optic. And you have your elevation adjustment here on the top of the optic. As you would expect, you'll turn counterclockwise to go up on the elevation. And on the windage, you'll turn right to go right. Or I'm sorry, you'll turn counterclockwise to go right. Follow the R, there's an R with an arrow. Is where I was going with that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna load out some of the, the cheaper ammunition um, to get it on paper and get it close. I'm gonna do groups of five as I zero this thing. Because generally speaking, if you can see a consistent group of three at a spot, then that's where your, your optic is at at that moment in time, or your iron sight, whatever it is that you're using. Um, and then I'll throw two more downrange on top of that just to make sure to eliminate for any kind of human error, because I guarantee you with me, there's gonna be human error. Uh, and I'm also shooting cold, you know, I haven't practiced or dry fired or done anything today, so forgive me. What I'll do is in between each one of the initial sets, I will stop the, the camera and I'll walk down here and I'll check where I'm at on paper, and I'll come back and give you an update of where I was falling. I'm using targets that have uh, actually a half inch increment. These are targets that uh, Insight Training Center, originally designed by Jeff Mao in 2009, were gracious enough to publish on the internet for anyone's, anyone's use. And they're really for AR-15s. To zero at 100 yards, you've got your 100, you've got your 50, and you've got your 25. But what, what I like about these is, for starters, they're, they're high visibility at, at this distance or any distance, and they have half inch, um, half inch increments instead of standard one inch, so I can dial it in a little, little more exact. I'm gonna be aiming for dead center 100 uh, on these, and like I said, I'll, I'll get up and go and check where I've hit on each one. I'll update you and let you know as I you know, stop the camera in between each individual shot until we get a little further along in the process. I ran out so, so quick that I forgot to bring my Walker Razor XVs, you know, my, ear, my true ear protection, but if you've read my, my Walker Razor XV uh, review and you've read my, my Gray Man or EDC series article, you'll know that I always have my LG tones on me. So I'm gonna be using those for ear protection, passive ear protection, no electronic or, or super ear protection, just basically passive. So safety first always. All right. Optic has an up and a down. You have to hold the up to get it to come on. There it is. And by the way, it is a three MOA dot. All right, here we go. This gun has not been cleaned. We have done all of the reviews and all of the shots. It has probably had, gosh, five, 600 rounds through it with no cleaning, no oiling, no anything. Um, so this is gonna be, this won't be a cold barrel side end. This will be a true, we've been using this one. This is a beater, this is our tool. Um, and every firearm I own is, is a tool. I do not own a firearm that just sits there and looks pretty. So here we go. 
My initial shot, I'm gonna be aiming dead center in between the four targets. I have four of the AR-15 style, or four of those bullseye targets set up down there. Uh, to get it on paper and to see exactly where I'm hitting, I'm gonna aim center of all four, so I'm not really aiming at anything other than paper for the initial shots. All right, we're gonna walk down here and we're gonna see where I'm hitting, see where I gotta dial it in, left, right, up, down, and uh, we'll be right back. All right, guys, so I've already broken the man rule and I've gotten the book out to be able to read the book and to get some of the, the points for you here. I was looking up what adjustment is, or how many adjustments, what the distance is per click. Uh, this isn't one MOA adjustment out at 100 yards. Um, so I'm going to probably click about twice per inch initially just to see how, how that it ends up going. Uh, it's possible it's a quarter inch or a quarter, yeah, quarter inch. But at this distance of 15 yards, I'm gonna do half, uh, two clicks per, per inch. So as of right now, we'll start with that and see how it, it pans out. Right now, I, 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 I'm shooting cold and so that wasn't a very good grouping, a very good example at all. So as far as um, elevation, I, I got mixed results. So out of the five shots, I got three that grouped two inches down and I got two that were above and below center line. So as far as elevation goes, that's gonna be an iffy one. So I'm probably gonna hit the middle and go one inch up just to see, and that was you know because of the two inch low and then the other two on center line. I'm gonna go one inch up, uh, meet in the middle, so I'll do two clicks up. And then I was a full five inches off to the left on the optic from center. So I'm gonna go, um, uh, let's see, let's do 10 clicks, 10 clicks right, uh, two up, and uh, let's see what we got. All right, so taking the sight tool that came with it. And by the way, this, this, this sight tool here is, I mean, it's, it, this is just a, a plain flat, flat Phillips head screwdriver, a very small one. And then over here on the other side, you've got the, the battery opening tool and that it's neat because it actually slides in and out. You got a little latch there that makes it go in and out. That's a nice feature and a nice touch to get the battery. And by the way, the battery is just a, I didn't mention this in the, when I was talking about, when we were talking the initial setup for it. It is just a standard CR 1632 style battery. And again, loads from the top. So I apologize about that. But this is where I was going with that is this, this is just a standard micro or uh, like a precision screwdriver you'd fix your, your glasses with. So just throw a cheap one in your toolbox in case you lose this one. Although I would try to keep up with this. That's a really cool tool. So as I said, we're gonna go um, 10 right, We'll see if it clicks or if it just smooth. Let's see. Okay, so there is a click to it. There is a tactile feel. You can feel it click, but it is very minimal and very smooth. So you have to truly take a light touch on this thing if you're wanting to feel it. So we'll do just a side note there. So I went 10 clicks to the right. May have actually been only about nine. I'm not sure on that initial click because I was trying to get a feel for it. We're gonna go up two. Okay, that was definitely two clicks. I felt that one. I was more ready on that one. All right, so passive ear protection. Five more shots. This time we're actually going to aim at one of the targets instead of um, center of the papers. See what we get. By the way, it does not co-witness with this, this particular sight. Okay, we're gonna go check and see where that landed. We'll be right back. All right, well that answers that question. So I'm still hitting about two and a half left. So that tells me that the initial 10 clicks went two and a half inches, um, which puts it at about a quarter inch 
you know, which is standard one MOA. So it's four clicks, four clicks per inch to move in any direction up or down. And with me doing the two, it brought it to one inch low, uh, exactly what I expected with the initial two inch assessment. So it's, it's four clicks, basically is what it boils down to one MOA standard out at 100 yards. All right, so now that we've got that as a known element, let's do 10 more clicks to the right. So we can get this on camera for you because this is some amazing science right here. Science. Kidding, of course. Well, this is amazing science. Screwdriver, not so much, you know. My Neanderthal ancestors were using screwdrivers. That thing is very, very smooth and it is hard to feel the clicks. So personal, personal whining. I personally like a little, little more of a tactile click, uh, click, but that is definitely not a reason not to buy this off. All right, back to Passivere protection. We've made the adjustments two clicks up, 10 more clicks to the right. Still using the Blazer brass ammo to dial it in. We're going to aim for that same first or that same top right target that we were aiming dead center on and see where we're at now. All right. One more adjustment down. I'm gonna go in here and check, see where I'm at. All right, I think I finally warmed up a little bit. I'm starting to get some consistent groups uh, and I overshot going up. I actually overshot by about a half inch. So I'm gonna come back down two clicks. Um, I'm still left. So I'm gonna come over a couple more clicks to the right, see what we can get working out on that. But I'm warming up finally. So let's go two clicks down. So let's go back clockwise, two clicks. Very low clicks there. I just think I did it, but I'm not 100% positive. Um, I'm gonna take us to the right a little more. Okay. All right. Your pro helps if you put the bullets in straight. I'm going to change targets this time so that we can get a, a better picture. I'm gonna to drop to the bottom right circle. Actually, no, I'm going to drop to the bottom left because of the fact that that one's got some holes in the paper already from up above from the initial center of mass or center targets. So from here, it looks like those were a little high still. So I'm gonna go down here and check it out, dial it down a little more and we'll see what we got. So my old man eyes were actually wrong. I actually took it down a little too far. Still off to the left, so I didn't need to do about one more click to the right. And need to come back up about two clicks. So let's do that to the right. Let's come back up just a wee bit. Again, it's that click. You can feel it, but man, that is so soft and so smooth. Your protection, I'm gonna aim at a fresh target that I know I've not shot at. I'm 100% positive I haven't shot at. We're gonna aim top left. I changed up a little bit too on that one, just so you know. I'm a two eye shooter. I always keep two eyes open when I'm shooting, just a rule of thumb. That time I intentionally closed my non-dominant eye, my left eye, um, because I wanna try to get a true sight alignment and sight picture uh, with my right eye, my dominant eye, and see where I'm hitting because I'm, I'm getting it very close to being able to dial it into an exact pinpoint at 15 yards. And so now I'm, I'm gonna transition to a slower cadence of fire and I'm gonna, uh, I'm also going to transition to using only one eye. I'm going to squint and keep my left eye closed and my dominant eye open and only my dominant eye. 
So from here, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna walk down and check that and see what I got. I think I may be tearing out some, uh, some center on that one. So we'll, we'll see, be right back. All right, that was pretty scary accurate. So I got one on almost on the black in the center and on the X and the, the black in the center is, gosh, it's smaller than a dime. Uh, and then I got a couple, I'm still hitting, after that last adjustment, it pulled it back up one inch up. So I'm not sure if that's me. And since I changed my shooting style on that last one, or if it's the sight. So I'm gonna gamble and I'm gonna meet it in the middle and I'm gonna go two clicks back down uh, and just see what we've got there. So at this point, I'm, I'm leaning towards human error. I'm thinking I'm, I'm thinking I'm pretty much about spot on where I would need to be definitely for combat, absolutely for combat. But for competition shooting, uh, you know, I wanna dial it in, just tweak it in a little more. I'm definitely thinking it's human error at this point, but I'm gonna try to meet it in the middle. I'm gonna come down two clicks. I'm gonna fire at that same target upper left again and see what we come up with. I'm not gonna go anywhere right or left on this one. Pretty happy with that at the moment. So we're going back counterclockwise to bring it down. Just a little bit, just a wee bit. All right. Hopefully it's all not too windy out here for y'all today, by the way. You can hear my loud mouth. All right, same target up top, one eye. Okay, that looks pretty good from here. Uh, again, old man eyes are in effect, but I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna look. That looks pretty good. I may leave it right where it's at, spin the camera around, have a little fun with some of the steel with a Gia ammo and just had uh, call it a day. We'll see. Hang on, be right back. All right, gearheads, I was pretty happy with the results of that. I'm tearing the paper out, uh, tearing out the X at 15 yards for sure. So as you can see right down here, I've got the paper targets at 15 yards. I'll splice in a picture or two of, of where it's siding in with that practice ammo. Right about here to the left of this tree, you can see I've got a 20, uh, 25 yard steel. Uh, I think it's a six or eight inch steel. Then just down to the left of it, we got one out at 50 yards. Then over here in between these two trees here, we've got some IDPA steel, probably about 75 yards maybe a little longer something about like that and we're going to give a try see if we can have a little fun with these we're going to see if we can throw some uh, throw some lead down to some steel all right first thing we're going to throw down range is some Agia 115 grain full metal jacket nine millimeter Luger all right Let's see what we can do with that all right we're going to go for the 25 first Ah, I love that sound, love that sound. Nice, all right. We got 25, let's go for the 50. Nice, hopefully you're seeing that or hearing it. If not, then I'm gonna lie until you I hit it. That's that 50. Let's go for the 75. Let's go for broke. Got it. I hope you can see that moving on the camera in here. Ding. Got the center one. I think I missed that one. All right. Next, we've got a little bit of the... 9 millimeter Agia, 9 millimeter Luger, uh, full metal jacket again. This one times 124 grain though. Going up, stepping it up. Again, bear in mind this gun has not been cleaned in forever. Start out the 25 again on this one. <laughs> Ding! Love it. Oh, a little disappointment there. That was shooter error for sure. Ding! 
There we go. Let's go for that 50 down there. That'd be a miss. Grazed it. It moved it, but there wasn't a good solid ding. But I hit it. That's a hit. A movement is a hit. All right. Now let's play with a little bit of um, a Gia Full Metal Jacket Flat Point 147 grain. Look at that. Isn't that sexy? Okay. All right. Now again, as we're, we're playing through all this, I want to make it clear that uh, this isn't the comprehensive review of the optic. Okay. The comprehensive review of this this Romeo One optic will come later on down the road. Today we're just sighting it in, kind of giving first impressions, a walkthrough, kind of giving you a feel of it, letting you get a, a look at how it works, how it looks, what it's going to be like on your firearm in particular, that kind of thing. Okay. So this isn't the comprehensive review. Stay tuned. In oh, interesting. Look at that. We had a stovepipe with the Agia flat nose. So that seated. It did not seat. Interesting. So let's press that back into the magazine. We're going to tap back. That time it loaded. I went too slow. That was user error again, I think. We're going to chalk it up to that. So we're going for the 25. Got it. 25 again. Got it. 50. That was a miss. That one's so small. Go for the 75 down there. A little bigger. We just got about 10 in our wind. Oh, and got it! Nice! Look at that! Can you see it swinging? Oh, I hope that's picking up on the camera. <laughs> that middle target, middle target, swinging down there. About a 10 mile an hour wind, maybe seven or eight. You can see the grass here waving. Nice! Very nice! Very nice. That was that Agia 147 grain flat nose. Very nice. Very nice. All right, let's go for some defensive ammo. So we got the Agia. 9 millimeter, 117 grain jacketed hollow point. Yeah, that little baby right there. Let's see what she'll do at a distance. Now, full disclosure, you definitely shouldn't be shooting somebody at 25, 50, or 75 yards for legal purposes. If they're at that distance, you need to run. But we're going to go ahead and try it anyways. All right. 25. Wind's picking up. It's coming from the west to the east. So from my right to the left. Got it. Ha <laughs> ha. Nice. 25. Twice. Still having trouble with that 50 down there. That's a little small for me. I don't know if it's the 3 MOA or it's just me. I think it's me. I'm hitting all around it in the dirt. Let's try it again. Oh, bing! That's right. 50 with the jacketed hollow point. Nice. Let's try the 75. Got it! Oh, <laughs> look at that. That's beautiful. All right, got one more shot. So let's try something really challenging. I don't know if you can see it. I'm probably going to miss this one, guys, but there is a right over here to the left of the 75 yard targets or so. There's a couple little small, like six inch round and another one of those little square eight inchers. Tiny little targets down there. Probably going to miss this one, but I want to try it anyways. Why not? Can't have fun. Don't come. Oh! <gasps> Yes! God, I hope that picked up on the camera. Yes, look at that. To the left of that tripod, that swinger. Nailed it. The furthest one, six inches. Beautiful. 
That is beautiful. Yeah, Romeo 1 Sig Sauer on the XP or X5 Sig Sauer P320 with the Agia ammunition. Beautiful combination. That, my friends, was a lot of fun. Stay tuned and check back with us until we see you at the range. You keep living your dream.